Hi class, so welcome to another video and really sorry for the late videos lately because we're quite busy. Okay, um so um so as I promised we're going to play the game uh Plinko. Okay. We're going to play Plinko. But but the point really here is that why are we going to play Plinko? But we're not just playing Plinko for the sake of us playing a game really but it's actually um there are a lot of things that are happening inside the plane car. Now okay, let me reset this one. So this is a plane car probability. So so here in this video we're going to learn um we're going to have a review about uh mean okay median mode and also we're going to um dig deeper into topics um dig deeper into um what they call standard deviation now all of these terms are in the context of sample so we're going to talk about the mean sam the sample mean the sample median and the mode also the standard sample uh, the sample standard deviation all right so now um what's really interesting about plinko is that is this well this is a very popular game in casinos so um so basically all you need to do is to drop a particular ball and then you're going to place your bet and you're going to determine um, how likely that you're going to win in a game, all right? So, if for example, you placed a bet here, and then after dropping, obvious, um, obviously, you didn't win the game because it dropped on the shell number 1, 2, 3, 4. So, it dropped on shell number 4, all right? So, let's try another one. So let me place it here. All right. So again, I lose this time because the ball dropped on the center, which is on the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh, the seventh uh, ball. So if you're going to think about it, what's the prob what is already the probability here? So it means it's not just a probability. This is a count rather. So so as you can see, bin number three has. Um, has one, another one is one. So it means that in, in this uh, scenario, one for B number three and one for B number six. So basically, uh, all I'm saying is that B number three, so B number three. Came in a, a, pass, a probability of one over two, and being number six has a probability of one over two. So it's point five, zero point five. Okay, so let's try to drop another one. Okay, so this will not, this will be no longer valid because we already have three and now we have been number um, eight so that's one over three so 0 0.33 0 0.33 0 0.33 okay so let's try another one Right, so this will also change. Because this is going to be bin number um, 7 at 1 over 4, 4, 4, 4. So 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. All right. So, what does this mean? For example, if you if you only made 
uh, four, uh, five, sorry, if you only made four attempts, it means, basically means that the probability of, the probability that the bin number seven will be, I'm sorry, the probability that bin number seven will be obtained is only at 0 0.25 probability and probability of bin um, 3 is also 0 0.25 probability probability of getting bin hashtag 6 is 0 0.25 probability bin hashtag 28 uh, 8 sorry is 0 0.25 so if we're going to if you're going to sum up this uh, 4, you will have a probability total is equals to 1.0. Alright? So, if you're, going try, if you're going to try to reset this one, right? So, it means that we're going to expect that B number 3, 7, uh, 6, and 8. If, if you really want to um, to have a higher chance of winning okay you're going to look at the closest bin so you check bin 7 check bin 6 and check bin 8 so you're going to place your bet on these three now if you have a lot of money to spare really all you need to do is to place your bet on number 6 bin 7 bin and 8 bin okay so let's try this one pick um but before that one well let's the probability of combining bin seven six i'm sorry the probability of of getting a chance of winning if you place your bets on big bin six seven and eight is actually is is the total of the three per uh, bins probability which is 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25 so basically you have 0 0.75 or if you're going what means to say is that if you're going to place your bet on the number six seven and eight you will have a 75 percent chance of winning percent chance of winning all right so let's try this one All right, sorry. So the, the 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 what happened here is that the ball dropped. The first ball dropped to um to pin number five, which is not expected on our, which is really not expected on our uh, prob uh assumption because seventy five percent is a is a is a huge number, but we we probably forgot that twenty five percent is also a big number, all right? So this is only for one, one attempt. Now, let's try four attempts. So two, three, four. See, all right. So we placed a bet on six, seven, and eight balls. So it means that you, if you place your bet on six, seven, and eight, you got the chance, higher chance of, you got a higher chance of getting a possible, a possible, more possible result. However, in this uh, scenario, the bin number 5 has the highest percentage or highest probability of winning. Alright, so the point here is that the point here of this fling call a probability game is that um, you are, um, it's really, really difficult to predict something, you know, it's really difficult to predict. Therefore, if we're going to look at this one. The probability of the sample space here is that probability is you can either get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So the sample space here is that you can either get any of the any of the values of the bin here as sample space. And 
the probability for each spin differs. Alright? So that's the meaning of this. So that's it's actually the, the, the real meaning of probability here in this case of playing golf. Alright? So let's, let's try to put another ball, which is let's try 10. Right? So you see here, if you place your bet on 6, 7, and 8, you already had a chance of winning. But as you can see, bin number 5 and bin number 9 uh, is also the same as bin number 6. Uh, bin number six. So they share the same uh, probability, really. Okay. So if you, if you didn't notice, the, the chance of winning is actually more on, this, more on the middle side not here on the other side so if you're going to play a game of plinko always you always have to look where the ball uh, um, is where the ball is actually uh, where the ball comes from is coming from so if it's center it's gonna be on the center but it's really different it's really difficult if you're going to, to look at this one so this is the reason why um, we have to try a different kind of approach so if you're going to zoom this one all right as you can see that we can change the direction I'm sure you, you, you didn't see that but let me this is one all right As you can see I can change or I can tilt the probability so it means here that the binary probability is zero it means that you will always arrive to the answer which is zero here okay you always get here or zero but that means you will never get the chance of getting one. Okay, so let's see this one. Okay, I'm sure you're already getting the point. So, that mean, um, what's the meaning of a binary word here? Binary is only you only have two outcomes. So it's either yes or no. So if you have, for example, um, for example, um. Meron kang, meron kang niligawan so if you're going to ask him um, if you're going to ask her so what is the probability what is the binary probability what is, what is my chance of you uh, you know magiging tayo so kapos na yung babae na na you have zero chance you have no chance so obviously you have no chance alright so zero as in zero chance so there's no probability or there's no way that you will get a yes because it's zero chance, all right. But if a girl tells you that um, maybe you're having a twenty percent uh, chance of winning, you know. So let's try. It. See. So if a girl uh, tells you that um, you can, I, mean, I give you a twenty percent probability or a twenty percent chance that you're going to 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 have my yes. So that's actually the meaning of it, right? But here, so this is only the binary probability. But if a girl is, you know, if you ask a girl and then she tells you that, ah, you're 100% my type. So, obviously, you know, 100% talaga yung type. So, kayo talaga yung magkakatuluyan. Unless, na, hindi ko yung trip niya. So, let's say, nasabi natin 60%, 69% chance lang. Okay. So I'm sure we already get the point here, all right? So let's reset. So how about if you have many kinds of rows? So let's try it when, um, for this sample size is only okay ten. We only have ten bins, all right? So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So probably some of you might ask, uh, why do we start at zero? Um, zero. Is actually a part of the counting numbers counting numbers okay counting numbers so when we count we, we're not actually starting from one so actually starts from zero so that's counting numbers okay so the binary probability here is that the ball can only get can either um, so the so the ball uh, so what this is really mean is okay so the binary probability only so the binary probability means that the ball once it drops has a 50% chance of getting to the left and 50% chance getting to the right. So that's the meaning of the 
that's uh, actually the meaning of the pro binary probability again so the ball will have 50% 50% chance of going to the left and going to the right okay so they have equal chance so if you're going to have uh, 10 rows it's also it's also going to be the same however the probability of jumping of the ball is you know very difficult one because we're not only going to talk about one leap here because if the ball drops here a 50% chance that will the ball will going to uh, is going to the left 50% chance going to the right now if the ball drop to the left or to the right sorry if the ball drop to the right again it will also have a different probability so it's either going to the left or going to the right now let's say that the ball goes to the to the left now here again the ball is either going to the left or either going to the right okay so let's say that the ball goes to the right so again it's either be the ball is going to the left or ball going to the right so it's gonna be a very very tricky this one but if you're going to look at it if you're going to look this one the the there is a higher chance that the ball will go straight right into the center okay because you all you are giving you are giving the ball the chance of 50 50 50 percent chance that it will only get to the left or go to the right so the probability here is so the chances are that the ball is going to drop on here in the middle and not here on the farther side which is on the left on the farther side of the right all right so we'll try this one so drop Okay, so pin number five. Okay. So you can see, this is the number of rows. This is uh, the binary probability. And this N is equals to number of attempts or number of, yeah, number of trials, which is we drop six balls. Okay, so X bar is uh, the sample mean. S is the standard deviation and what you see on the right is the blue one which is uh, mu the population uh, population uh, mean and this is the standard deviation which is ideal so this is already actually the ideal now if you're going to make a very slight probability so if it means if you're going to to make um, make the ball slight to the to to the to the left at a 30 percent probability you will see that the ball will drop here see all right now if you're going to make a probability of going here also it's going to change okay 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 so let's try again let's try going back to 50 50 50 percent chance Okay, so again, this is the actual, the red one is the actual scenario, and the blue one is the ideal scenario based on what's already expected on the formula. Okay, so let's try um, dropping 10, uh, 10 balls. Okay, As you can see. Um, it's gonna be only six here. So how did we get? Uh, how did we? How did? How did we get the, the values of the sample mean the standard deviation? Now for the sample mean, it's basically um, the sample mean or the mean rather x bar is the total number. It's actually all the sample uh, samples that you get. For example. Um, you have three bin number three has one one uh, con uh, contains one and then bin number five contains two and bin number oh sorry x mu is bin number three has one uh, one outcome bin number five has two bin number six 
has 4 um, bin number 8 has 1 bin number 9 has 1 and bin number 10 also has 1 okay so the total number is 10 now the sample mean okay So the sample mean is 6.4 6.4 So we get 6.4 sample mean here So what this mean is that we have a, So what this means that uh, we, are, we are saying that the outcome of our experiment has a mean of 6.4 so it means that um, all of the values that we get is somewhere is balanced between this 6.4 6.4 bin so this is not actually the value though but this is so what the mean basically saying is that all of the values that we obtain have uh, has a bin at 6.4 uh, balance. So it means kapag naglagay tayo dito ng weight ng um, example, di ba? If you want to try to balance a seesaw, we have to put same amount of force considering that we have the same equal distance. Okay? For example, di ba ito yung seesaw? Kapag naglagay ka ng malaki dyan, naglagay ka ng maliit dito, Obvious naman na ang ating siso ay magti-trip to the right. Okay? Di ba? So, so, anong gagawin nitong maliit para magpantay sila nitong malaki? So, ang gagawin ng bat, ang gagawin ng maliit, isuuso siya ng malapit. Ay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hindi pala. So, hindi pala ganun. So, let's say na, for example, ito na lang malaki, sabi niya, uh, mag adjust na lang ako, nalapit na lang ako punta sa'yo para balance tayong dalawa. Okay? So, ang gagawin ng mataba is uusog siya, papalapit dito sa center. So, for example, for example, okay, so, uusog yung mataba dito para maging that's all, talit niya. So, uusog yung malaking tao dito para mag-balance sila ng batang maliit sa kapila. Okay? So, yun ang ibig sabihin nitong mean. So, yung mean ay yung parang magiging balance yung ating mga uh, data or value. Okay? So, magiging balance eh. Now, um, ano naman yung ibig sabihin ng S? Diyan. Yung S is actually the standard deviation. Now, standard deviation is defined as uh, the measurement of how uh, how how this uh, how um, how changing the how changing the the values are from uh, from the mean or from the natin lang natin o yan nahirapan ang utal ako ok standard deviation ok standard deviation is the measure of how spread out numbers are ok so going back so standard deviation is like this example meron tayong mga building okay example ito yung area mga building tayo dito building kasi mga building tayo dito building tayo dito building tayo dito building tayo dito kapapansin nyo no mas marami yung building dito kaysa sa building dito at kung ibabalansin natin nya for example ilalagay natin sa isang napakalaking timbangan ito hanapin natin kung saan magbabalance itong malaki 
itong isong side na right side at itong left side. Yun yung mean. At the standard deviation, ibig sabihin yan is, gaano magkakalayo itong mga to at mga to. So, gaano sila magkakalayo? So, ibig sabihin, mababa. So, ibig sabihin, ang standard deviation is very low kapag yung ating mga building is magkakalapit. Okay. Mga kalapit sila, mababa yung standard deviation. But the more na mas malayo sila sa isa't isa, the more na malaki ang standard deviation. So, from the word itself, deviation is de to deviate. Okay? To deviate. And to deviate is is related to how how it is not conforming to to what's normal. For example, okay, example, no? Ito yung mga ito yung mga building natin. Tapos may biglang malayo dito. So, ibig sabihin, ito ang layo niya. So, ibig sabihin, nag-deviate siya. Deviate. Ibig sabihin, nag-deviate siya. Ganun siya, ganun siya nag-deviate. Ibig sabihin, ang layo-layo na ang distance niya from the normal or expected. So, ito expected natin. Expected natin, ang expected ng engineer na magtatayo ka ng bahay somewhere here. But you deviate. You deviated from the expected. And you instead, instead na maglagay ka sa area na to, dito ka naglagay sa malayo-layo. And that distance is measured by standard deviation or S. Now actually, S, but some books use sigma. Alright? So, I hope you get that one. Okay, so... Alright, so, so how can we, how do we compute the standard deviation of this one? So, standard deviation, or sigma, is equivalent to the square root of the summation of the sample, one of the sample, minus mu, squared, all over the number of, um, number of, uh, population. So, if we're going to talk about the standard deviation of a population, yeah, again, tama, tama, tama. Population of a sample, we use this one. So, population, so this is for pop population, and we use S. We use S for sample. Now, if we're going to talk about the sample, sample deviation, so actually same lang din naman ang formula, pero may difference lang. So, xi minus x bar squared all over n minus 1. Okay? So, population, if we're going to talk about expected um, expected overall and for the sample is only a part of the population. So, there's actually two kinds of interpretation here. So, you use this formula if you are, on, if you are talking about a sample. Alright? So, sample. It means that it's the, al it's the outcome of our experiment. But the population here is the expected, okay. So this is the expected, okay. Expected. So for experiment, for our uh, experiment here. So we're going to use sample because we did not actually talk about overall. So we only made an assumption if we're going to use 10 balls, what will be the outcome. So this is basically just a simple experiment. So we're going to use a formula for the sample, not the population though. Okay, so for the sample, formula is the summation of x value minus um, x bar squared all over n minus 1. Okay, so 
how do we do this one? Okay. So, how do we do this? Okay. So, summation means that it's sum, right? Oh, yeah, sum, of course. Okay. So, looking at this, uh, looking at this data, we say here that the bin number 3 has 1, bin number 5 has 2, bin number 4 has 4, and 8, 9, and 10 has 1 respectively. So, x1 here is the bin. Okay? It's actually the bin. Because the bin has the value. So, it means that you will use how many times the bin has a number or has a value. For example, bin number 5 has twice the value because it has two twice an occurrence. So, it means nangyari yung 5, na, nagkaroon ng twice outcome yung five num number bin, five, bin number 5. So, yung summation na yan, yung summation xi x bar squared so start pa tayo dito sa sa start pa tayo dito sa loob okay start pa tayo dito sa loob na ito okay pero actually pwede naman tayo magsabay no okay sabay so equivalent yan sa okay yung bin number 3 may isang laman therefore isa lang so bin number 3 minus ang ating sample mean yung mean natin kanina is 6.4 6.4 squared so isa pa lang yan plus for the 5 we have 2 occurrence so 2 occurrence for 5 bin number 5 minus 6.4 squared so plus so for bin number 6 we have 4 occurrence so 4 4 occurrence for bin number 6 minus 4 uh, sorry minus 6.4 squared plus so for bin number 8 we have only 1 occurrence so 8 minus 6.4 squared plus 9 minus 6.4 squared plus 10 minus 6.4 squared, squared so yun ito so this is equivalent so summation of xi minus x bar, uh, x bar squared is equivalent to if you're going to use your calculator Okay, so the summation of xi minus x bar is 38.4. Okay, so s is, okay, kurain ko na lang. This is 38.4. Now, for the n minus 1, our n is 10. Okay? So, basically, that's 9. Okay? Therefore, our sample or sample 
uh, standard deviation is equivalent to the square root of 38.4 divided by 9. So we have 2.066. Yay! So we have the same standard deviation. So this is a standard sample standard deviation. So it means that we can expect that from 6.4, we can expect a value of minus 2 here. So it means that 6 minus uh, 6.4 minus 2.066. Okay, so we can expect a value from here to here. Okay. But if you're going to look at the expected here, so expected that the mu or the sample mean will be exactly on 6 and standard deviation is 1.7 okay kapansin nyo diba so you're only expecting a 1.7 1, a 1 standard deviation if we're only expecting the, the values will only be here okay so kapansin nyo diba ang laki laki nitong sabi number 4 at saka sabi number 8 but in reality our standard deviation umabot ang ganito ang standard deviation natin sa 3 at saka sa number 9 so Ganun kalayo yung standard deviation. So, ganun kalayo yung standard deviation ng ating samples. So, again, an, a, a, sample, a sample deviation, a standard deviation of zero means that all of our samples ay nandito sa gitna. Which is very impossible naman, no? But, of course, a standard deviation, um, a, a lower standard deviation or a low standard deviation is okay. It's, it's very okay. It means that our data are all expected to be here accumulated at this point at the center so this is the so this is the what they call really a binomial distribution for example it's a very good example of this one is you know how to interpret graph graph is i know for example um iq iq this is the iq level and this is the age or the population population Okay, so, so let's say na based on our conducted survey, based on our conducted survey, as our population age, or let's say population age, right? Sorry. So let's say this is a population age. Population age. Okay. Alright, so, so let's say that Einstein, Einstein has an IQ of 160, okay, and based on our current survey conducted on 2012, let's say that our population, okay, population A01, Okay. It means that um, we have a central tendency or a, cent of a median age here. So let's say in our study, we have found out that the mean, the mean of our sample, is, I mean, it, what it means to say is the mean age of our, our respondent is, let's say it's uh, 25 years old. Okay? So... So, 25 yan, therefore, this is 50 years old, tama? And this is 0. So, let's say this is 25 years old. So, it means that our, if we're going to have um, this kind of population, okay, so, it means that we are expecting an age of this one to have a very high, uh, not actually that one. Okay, so papansin nyo. Okay. O, oh, yan lang. Ibang, ibang kulay na lang. Okay. So, yan. Uh, so, yung age na to, yun yun yung age na ito, ang may matataas na IQ. Okay, ito naman nyo. Babang tumatanda, buwababa yung IQ. Pero parang pangit yata ng data na ito, no? Kasi, 
you mean habang tumatanda isang tao, lalong buwaba ba yung IQ? Uh, diba? Ito yung ibig sabihin na to. For example, this is only example study anyway. So, ano ba yung maganda example pa? Okay. So, again, going back to IQ. Okay, this is IQ, and this is IQ of Einstein, let's say 60. So, let's say that the number of population. Okay, so the number of population. So, for example, ang data natin is like this. Alright. So, ano ibig sabihin yan? Okay. Ano ibig sabihin ng data na yan? So, it means that... Okay. So, this only means that a very small amount of people... have a very respectable IQ. However, let's say that this is a value of 50 IQ. So, very low. That's a very low IQ, really. 50 is a very low IQ. So, it means that many people have an IQ of 50. Hindi lang yan, ha? If you're going to look at this one, kasama din ito. At kasama din ito. Okay? Okay? So, let's say that this is 100. 100 IQ. So, it means that also, more people more people here as an IQ of 100. And this one may 160. At meron pa pala tayo mga tiyatawal at mga geniuses. So, meron tayo mga genius pala, ano? Ito yung mga genius natin. Okay? Genius. So, what we're trying to say here is, marami tayong population na nandito sa area na to compared sa area na nandito. So, we can say that this population is, oh, they have a very good IQ. Kasi, could be, uh, marami sila, yung ibig sabihin is, Konti lang yung tao na nandito sa age, mga area na ito, di ba? Konti lang yung mga tao sa area na ito. Pero maraming tao, mas, mas concentrated yung tao din na may matataas na IQ dito. Mas marami kasing density ito. It means that yung population na ito is um, composed of um, good to high IQs. Okay? due to high IQ. So, ibig sabihin, konti lang sa kanila ang may mababang IQ. Yung ibig sabihin ng, da- ibig sabihin ng data na ito. Okay? So, what if ito naman yung itsura ng ating graph? Using the same IQ? Oh, sorry. same IQ and this is 160 of Einstein okay let's say uh, okay so this is the population population number So, the more tumataas ang tao, so, parami ng parami ng tao, so, tumataas ang kanilang IQ, so, yeah, so, ibig sabihin, marami din tayong tao dito na, so, okay, so, what if baliktad na yung graph natin, no? What if baliktad to? So, let's say, let's say this is the population, and this is IQ. Now, this will have a diff- very different uh, meaning, really. So, let's say this is the population and this is the IQ. Now, um, this this kind of graph will have a very different meaning. Because if you're going to look at this one, more population, less population, less population. It means that very few, only very few people 
have a high IQ. Highest IQ. So very small percentage of people has, uh, has the highest IQ. And yet, for example, this is the average IQ. Let's find it in the Okay. So let's say that this is the average. And these are the above average. Above average or the like AA. And this is the average. And this is Buroy. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, konti lang pala yung mga bu ano, buro yun, no? Yan. Tapos, ito naman yung mga uh, nasa low IQ, between low IQ and buro yun. naman yung mga average IQ, no? At sila naman, ito na mga to, um, yung, uh, between average and then above average IQ. At sila naman ang may above average to high IQ. So, ibig sabihin, maganda rin ang population na ito. Kasi, ibig sabihin, uh, pag ito yung country, let's say, um, I don't know what kind of country this is. Maybe this is Norway. No? Because Norway has the has the excellent uh, education system, so we can say that oh, marami educated na tao sa kanila. Okay, so this this baka ito yung magiging mga na itsura ng kanilang graph. So population graph nila, so the example, ito yung, ito yung population graph ng IQ categorization ng IQ ng mga tao sa Norway. So malalaman natin na ah, ang dami pa ng tao matatalino sa Norway. At nandisaan nila rin pala yung highest IQ. So, what if sa Philippines daw, ano kaya itsura ng ang question dyan is, ano kaya ang graph ng sa Philippines? Very interesting, no? I don't know. Maybe yun to. <laughs> where this is the where this is the average IQ <laughs> and this is the highest IQ. Ito naman yung low IQ. So, ako naman, ibig sabihin, mas marami yung mga low IQ sa Pilipinas. Kaysa sa, so, ito, ibig sabihin na, ito, ito yung mga low IQ. Ito naman yung mga, <laughs> ito naman yung mga average IQ. So, ako naman ni Sir Ikal, uh, ibig sabihin, konti lang yung mga tao matatalino at mga may average na IQ sa Pilipinas. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, so, ibig sabihin yun yung mga, o so, ibig sabihin, kung gusto mo manalo bilang politician, Okay. Bulahin mo to. Bulahin mo yung population na yan para manalo ka. Kasi kahit kahit mag-solid pa, kasi kahit mag-solid pa yung mga matatalinong tao, kung mga sobrang dami ng mga tao ito mga low, low IQ na tao, so mananalo talaga yung politician. Okay? So, ganun kasi siguro sa Pilipinas. I don't know. I'm not really, I'm not really um, generalizing though, but uh, I think this is one of a good example of how, what are Filipinos say in the Philippines? In terms of voting, ha? Voting. Hindi yan yung average, hindi yan yung ano, ha? Hindi yan yung IQ ng Pilipinas. Ano, yung mga Pilipino, ha? Baka masaktan kayo. Hindi. In terms of voting lang yan, ha? In terms of voting lang. Voting. Okay? Linawin ko lang, ha? Voting. Okay? So, parang ganun din yun dito sa plane ko. So this is actually a um, very good example of interpreting data, how this first data is. So I guess, uh, sana naman nag guess nyo. So for example, probability here is, so kaya sana naman may kaitsura, di ba? May, di ba may kaitsura itong graph na to. So binary probability, for example, kapag ito yung expected natin, so it means that our population has a very low uh, IQ. High IQ, yung IQ natin is very low because our our population is towards this one. So, um, pangit. So, ang dami natin population ng mga mahihinang IQ. But, if you're going to have a binary probability like this, so, ibig sabihin, wow, lahat matatalino. Pag ito naman, average. Ibig sabihin, ibig sabihin, maraming, maraming, maraming bobo, maraming din naman na matatalino. Okay? So, I, I hope nag-gets yung point kung bakit ito yung ginagamit ko yung examples, no? 
So, saan kaya ng Pilipinas, no? Dito kaya? O dito kaya? Imposible naman dito. For example, 100% lahat matatalino. Pure matatalino. Ito naman, pure bobo lahat. Hindi <laughs> naman siguro ganito sa Pilipinas, no? Siguro, ang ganito lang. Ang ah, ganyan to, siguro. Yan. Average. Ah, siguro, malapit sa ganyan. Okay? So, that's it. Um, that's it for the video, really. Um, but how about we going to predict the probability, really? So, how do we do this one? So, let's try the dropping poles. Okay, so probability of 47%. Okay, so this is a probability. Okay. As you can see here, um, bin number 4 has a 30% chance of getting... getting uh, this is a 30% probability. While number 2 obtain a 0.1 or 0.10, a 10% probability. And poles 5, 6, and 7 got 0.2% probability. Now, how did we... So, paano nakukuha yan? Okay, so, simple lang naman. So, bibilangan nyo lang kung ilang beses nahulugan yung bin. Divide nyo yan sa total number of balls. Okay, so, kapansin nyo, sa num bin number 4, may tatlong ball na nahulog dyan. So, that is 3. So, obviously, that is... That is basically 3. So, sa bin number 4... Number 4, ang probability ng bin number 4 is, kasi nakuha natin ay 3. Nakuha din ay 3. At ilan yung balls natin? Over 10. Okay. So, ang probability natin is 0 0.3. So, ito naman 0 0.3, di ba? Tama naman. O, yan o, yan o. Yan 0 0.3. So, yan ang probability na nakuha natin dun sa bin number 4. So, ganun din naman, hindi naman gagawin niyo sa iba. So, for example, probability of getting bin number 2, that is, ilan yung nahulog sa bin number 2. So, we have 1 divided by 10, so that's 0 0.1. Okay, so, how do we how do we make a very ch a high chance of probability? So, ibig sabihin, magtaya ka. Magtaya ka sa napakaraming butas. Okay, para mas malaki yung chance na manalo. Okay, so if we're going to get more chance of winning, so mag mag so tina mo ulit itong pinam mag magkakalapit na mga ball. So we have 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. So iko combine natin yan. So our probability is 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2. So pagtataya ka, probability kapag tataya ka sa beans uh, 5, 6, and 7, ito yung probability mo. So we have uh, 0 0.2 for 0 0.6. So we have a, so you have a 60% chance of winning kapag tumaya ka sa sa beans 5, 6 and 7. Okay, so ulitin ko lang. So wow. 2 3 4. Oh, diba? So nanalo ka kapag magtataya ka sa 5, 6, and 7 beans. So, yun lang yun. Yun lang naman ibig sabihin. Yun lang naman ibig sabihin yun. So, um, thank you for, uh, thank you for playing with me, with Plinko. Um, I hope you get something from this experiment. So, I hope you get the point of mean. Um, di ko na guess, di ko na tinuro yung median, no? So, median kasi is, is dito. Mean is the average of the data set. So, the mode is the most common number. So, balik natin yung Plinko. So, ang mode natin dito ay yung 4. Kasi siya nakakuha ng 2. And then, yung median is the middle of the set numbers. So, okay. So, paano naman dito makukuha yung median, really, no? So, median. So, isa yung ating median. What is median? Okay. Median. Okay. So, yung marami, no? So, 4, 5. Ah, okay. Okay. So, ito ay 4, 4, 4, 1, 1. So, 4, wait lang. 6, medium is 4 and 5. So, we have 4, 5, and 7. So, we have 5.33 median. So, here, somewhere here, median. Okay. So that's it for the video. Really, um, appreciate. Uh, I hope you to get something from this video and our discussion about you know probability. I hope you 
uh, get how we make uh, interpret the gra graphs so how do we use the graphs to interpret something is our IQ ng Pilipinas so ganon um, yeah hope you get it uh, thank you good night bye bye